Boom. Hello and welcome to the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast, Season 2. With your host, Byron Rogers. This podcast is dedicated to the Executive Protection Practitioner, the Private Security Professional. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the mental, emotional, psychological, physiological fitness that goes into being an efficient and effective Executive Protection Agent. Whether you're in law enforcement, whether you're a mom that's looking at how to protect your children or a father that's focused on how how to protect his family. I believe this podcast has something for all of you. We might even get into some tales from the crypts of true Hollywood stories from time to time. I'm doing this podcast because I feel the reality of this job is simple. If you really want to be good at executive protection, it's more than just a job. It really is a lifestyle. And those of you who've been in the game for any serious amount of time, you already know what I'm saying is true. So if that sounds interesting to you, Enjoy the show. Out. Yeah. Boom. What's up, you guys? Byron Rogers here again with another episode of the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast. And I've got some honored guests, uh, some gentlemen that recently wrote an article. On, and for those of you that don't know, there's a there's a blog that's been crushing it and changing the face of the executive protection game called EP Ramblers. And uh, a few of the gentlemen up in here today wrote an article called EP Pretenders. And um, I'm really excited to dive into it because it's something that we've all, that many of us have noticed in our industry, especially in this age of social media. So I've got Christian West and Jared Vendries here with me today. How are you gentlemen doing today? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Um, I look forward to every episode, but this one I think is, is definitely going to be special. I got both of you here in the same place, so we're winning, we're winning, you know. Yeah, we're excited. Happy to be here. Awesome. Um, so I guess, like, just from the beginning, um, what inspired you to write this article that obviously hit a pain point in the industry, you know, something relevant, very relevant? Hey, Christian, you want to go first? And I'll... Well, I don't know what what inspired us to write this article specifically, Um Obviously, EP Ramblers, for people who don't know it, is uh, something that Jared and I have um, felt pretty dearly about because there is a tendency of us being um, very serious and taking ourselves extremely serious. Mm -hmm. And there's just a lot of uh, interesting stuff that's kind of funny going on. And um, anybody who ever heard me speak and, and knows me very well and knows that Jared is the same, that we're never afraid of making fun of ourselves. Right. And EP, EP Ramblers has from the beginning been kind of a uh, fun project where we hope that uh, we can maybe make the industry smile a little bit and, and maybe look internally and uh, look at ourselves a little bit. And it looks like we kind of hit a nerve, like you said, with with the last one here. What do you say, Jared? Yeah, you know, I, I think the thing that bothers the hell out of me about the EP industry is everybody takes themselves so goddamn seriously and they can't laugh or smile or it's like this weird command presence that they have to have all the time where we're robots right. and i get it when you're working with principles and you're focused and doing the mission and all of that but but why can't we be self-deprecating why can't we point out the funny stuff uh why can't we make fun of people why can't we talk about ourselves and talk about the things in the industry that everybody thinks about but doesn't have the sack to 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 bring it up and so that's kind of us. You know, Christian is not ever afraid to put himself out there. I'm not afraid to put myself out there right. in the you most embarrassing. Funny, yeah. Though. What's that? You just never did anything funny, right? That's right. I mean, but we, we do everything that we can to try. You know what I mean? Yep. And, you know, to a certain extent, everybody's a pretender in, in some things, you know, like this article, like when I was on my, on my come up trying to, you know, get in the industry, like I did everything that I could to break in. And pretended yeah. that I knew more than I did at the time. I mean, yeah. we all pretend. I mean, the first time uh, I knew my wife was going to see me naked, you know, I trimmed my bush down a little bit so I could <laughs> at least appear to have like more, you know, more length and girth around my my Johnson. You know what I'm saying? But you know, that's a I'm sensitive <laughs> about that, so don't bring it up. You know, but we, we all do what we we got to do. You know? Yes. No, I dig it. I, it was it was part of the inspiration for this for this podcast was, you know, me being 21 and trying to figure out how to survive in this game. 
and trying to find answers and it's like the wild west and being like you know what i hope other guys don't have to go through that you know uh thank god i had some decent mentors that kept me alive and kept me kept me you know healthy stopped the bleeding when i made mistakes so i couldn't agree more man i think it's a righteous thing and i mean i had a team the other day that i had to actually kind of lean on and be like look guys you know strong leaders make leaders you know you haven't made it because you're here you know, don't let me even feel like some of you guys are talking down to anyone else because, you know, there's some, you think you're good because you're good at one skill or another. I'm like, what we're doing ain't that cool. It's an honor, but like, we're not fast roping out of helicopters. And do you know what I mean? Like, who are yeah. we? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. If you look at me, man, I spent 30 years waiting for other people, right? When people mm-hmm. ask me what I do, I pretty much made a career out of waiting. It's, um, <laughs> it's not really that, that fancy, right? Yeah, yeah I think this, this whole thing where everybody wants to dress it up sexier than what it is, or, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, I don't, I don't know how many people that I know that when we're at like some EP cocktail mixer or something, and they're like, yeah, I'm, you know, so-and-so's, uh, you know, protective agent. I go everywhere that this person goes. And then I could be like, well, I was with your principal at my client's house on such and such date. And I didn't see you there, you know? <laughs> and so it's like this, it's like this weird, I don't know, dick measuring contest all the time in the industry, yeah. right? Like, what are you? What's your background? What do you do? What type of, you know, yeah. uh, clients do you have? What kind of cool t- uh, tattoos do you have that I don't have? You know what I mean? Like, what, yeah, whatever it is. <laughs> I got plenty of tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah I, I understand um, it. You know, I, uh, I, don't, I don't put tattoos because I don't want to desecrate uh, God's flesh, but that's just me. You know what I mean? You got jokes for days. <laughs> no, I, I, but I, on what you're saying, it's a hundred percent accurate, man. I, I think that it's something that happens a lot. I, I get a lot of it at like shot show. I'm sure you guys have heard that too. I think that I think it's human nature on some levels. And this is kind of going back to this. It's more than just a job. It's gotta be a lifestyle. When it's, when, when your job doesn't define you, you're relaxed. It's high. Mm-hmm. I'm Byron, you know, mm-hmm. how you doing? You know, mm-hmm. but when you let your job define you, then it's, hi, I'm Jeff, maybe seal eight years. Uh, what's your name? And I got, that's a real thing I've gotten before, <laughs> you know, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm Byron. I was in the Marine Corps. Like yeah. maybe we, you know, can, am I still cool enough to hang out? You know? And I think that um, knowing who you are comes from doing a lot of internal work. And especially in the world that we live in right now, consumer driven society where you are at the sum total of your valuables and your cool cards. If you don't know who you are, it's really easy to be seduced into a lot in this game, you know, when you're, you're on private jets and you're in hotels and if you're not inoculated to it, it's really, it's uh, really easy. You know, a lot of people tend to forget that it's not about you, right? It's right. really about your clients and it's really about servicing your clients. And at the end of the day, what we sell is service. Right. Right. Um, we just service sometimes to extremes and uh, we just have to remember that. Mm-hmm. That's like, and that's just it. That's like, that's, I think that's, that's survival in this game. Mm-hmm. You know, that's really it right there. You know, uh, I'm feeling a little insecure on this podcast though, Christian, because <laughs> I, I'm sitting here and I'm with you and I'm with uh, Byron and he's by far the, the better looking out of uh, us three here. <laughs> So I'm like, how do I get this fucking cool guy swag? You know what I mean? Like this, uh, you, know, you know, big dick energy, so to speak. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yo, I, 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 <laughs> thank you. I I've heard that I, before. It's freaking me out. I don't, I don't really know what that is, but you know, I'm going to get the haircut. Me and Christian got it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, 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 you know, I passed 50, right? And as you can see, I'm a pretend Viking. So I'm kind of like a, a Viking. It's <laughs> cool. And yeah, uh, but that's, cool. that's every day. I wouldn't really be anything in Viking culture because for the life of me, I can't grow a full beard. No. It's pretty obvious when you can't grow hair, you can't grow a full beard, right? So I'm, I just have a EP Viking pretender beard. So I, I'll never be a cool guy. Mm. Oh man, you guys have done your work, man. You guys, uh-huh. you guys have done your work for sure. Well, I wanted to, I think one of the things for me that was really big with this article was, you know, I do a lot of stuff that is, I think some people kind of can get the wrong idea, you know? Uh, I just wanted to see kind of, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I just wanted to put that out on the table. I saw some of the comments under the 
video, you know, and people were like, and I gave, I gave my two cents under the, underneath the blog article and I gave my two cents and I was like, yeah, I think this is a quality problem. The things you guys mentioned inside your article, I've had people interview with me and do all of them, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I could tell that there was something out there where people were like, you know, well, one of the guys said, do you think that, don't you think these guys are talking about you? And I'm like, how do you figure my, my man, you know? Um, so it's one of the things that I saw that I was like, man, I got to lean into this and see and, and use it as a way for people to kind of see my heart. Cause I think that there is some truth to some of, uh, you know, I've had some guys say, well, you're misrepresenting the, the industry with this, this, that, and the next thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, like I'm posing with guns, you know, um, I'm posing, doing all this crazy stuff all the time, you know, and I'm kind of like, well, I want everyone to know, you know, if you look at my executive protection content, you're going to see me doing executive protection, talking about the skills that it's taken me to survive in this game. Now, if you go over to my life brand stuff, you're going to see art. You're going to see what Byron thinks is is cool mixed with what Byron thinks is valuable. It's going to be a picture of me, you know, doing something I think is cool with like an AR. Now, I'm not telling you I'm walking down Beverly Hills carrying an AR, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's a picture of me with like a suit and an AR at a cool photo shoot, but then talking about looking like I'm going to war because the principle of the blog is these are the psychological principles I use when I go to war or when I survive in life, you know? Um, and I find people cherry picking those photos sometimes and then acting like I'm talking about EP with them. And I'm like, mm. this is not what this is for, you know? Um, what do you guys think about that? I, I mean, I think like this blog has had a ton of traction. I mean, we're at probably 30 or 40,000 views within about a week and a half, just in terms of all the different um, uh, media outlets and things that it's been shared on. And yeah. like, I, like I, I talked to you, we, you know, out of all those, you know, views we've had maybe four or five, seven people be like, yeah, it's good that you're getting it on Byron, that fucker, you're, you're calling it up. <laughs> and, um, and I'm like, guys, I'm not picking on Byron. We're not picking on Byron here. It's like, it's, it's pretty much anybody that looks in the mirror and and can read this and be like, is this me? Yeah. Am I this? Have I done this? And they can make that determination. I mean, there's plenty of people out there in the industry that post the most outlandish shit online when you look at, you follow close protection or um, bodyguards or celebrity protection or any of those things where they're, really posting with clients or just look at the pictures in the blog where you get the guys with, you know, two guns holding it up or, (laughs) you know, um, uh, you know, basically violating confidentiality. And I think in terms of you, I I think you're a polarizing figure and Christian and I have talked about this, you know, uh, you know, I I mean, I'd love to hear uh, Christian, you can probably chime in too what you you see with that, but like, for whatever reason, man, you're going to have people that don't like you. There's plenty of people that don't like me. Um, there's probably less people, uh, that don't like Christian, but. Well, you'd be surprised, man. You'd be surprised. (laughs) And and I always say that if you don't have haters, you don't have anything. And I think. Brian, you and I have talked about this before. I think, uh, one of the things that I've always really appreciated Mm. is when somebody that is relatively unknown in the beginning, comes in and make a big splash. And I've said to you many times that it took me 30 something years of over 250 days on the road to just make a small impact. If I had figured out social media the way you had figured out social media, I would have made a big splash or maybe even have made a wave, right? Mm. What I was able to do was a small splash and I think that you figured out social media faster and probably better than most in this industry faster. Mm. And, you know, by doing that and you do it when you write books, you do it when you write blogs, you do it when you post, you put yourself out there. That's true. And when you put yourself out there, people will have an opinion, good or bad. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but, but well, hold on, Christian. Byron's problem is he's bought followers online. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> See, I, all that I have no opinion about because no, I, but no, I, but do you no. do you do you remember when we first started EP Ramblers and I go, hey, how do we buy some fucking followers here? Like, let's <laughs> yeah, let's get shit going, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know how to do that, and you know, it's it's. It's hard for me to actually uh, have, have a, a, I mean, Jared and I have discussed this in, in depth, right? Because what, what, what is really an EP pretender? It depends on who you, you compare yourself to, right? Yeah. You know, and, and people have um, opinions about other people based on, on half the truth that they know or what mm-hmm. they read online and all of that stuff. And I guess it'll always be like that. Yeah. But for me, it's more like, hey, People do what they do, and yeah. to create the social media that you want to create, you need to to post stuff. And we all have different styles, right? And right. and I can see where people get confused, right? Yeah. Because some of your pictures, I I haven't gotten to do all of that. I wish I could, <laughs> right? But I'm not a yeah. I'm not a and and you know when you're not as tactical a guy as many many tactical guys are and stuff like that. I mean, anybody who's been to IPSB uh, shoots and stuff can see that I have to be lucky if I even hit the target. Right. So it's, um, it's, it's easy to confuse, right? Because yeah. people go out and shoot on the weekends and whatever, and they have a social media feed and all of that. Does that make me that, that they run and gun when they work? I, I don't necessarily think so. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that um, at the end of the day, people can kind of like make up their own opinions, but if, if they make them up based on false premises, well, then um, maybe they don't matter that much in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, you're not a tactical guy. Byron's a tactical guy. I'm a tactical guy in the bedroom. You know what I mean? I, put both <laughs> guys in. I got two, I got two little boys. You know what Jerry's, I mean? Jerry's going to make this thing interesting one way or another. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I, I really appreciate you saying that. Um, both of you guys, uh, uh, for me, you know, it's been like, I'm, I'm young, you know, I know I'm going to still make a lot of different mistakes. I'm still creating, building a parachute on my way down, you know, a f- multiple parachutes with four different brands simultaneously. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur for this last decade mm-hmm. and that what you're talking about, Christian, but the social media stuff that just comes from failing it like six different social media centric endeavors at this over the course of the year. So like for me to be able to uh, do anything useful online, it's like this synergy of like all these failures that, you know, give me a little bit of competence, you know? Um, So it's really, it's really beautiful to see something come full circle. And then, yeah, man, I bought followers. Yeah. I bought followers. I bought, (laughs) I bought followers when I was trying to figure out one of my social media things. And I, um, I, and it was one of the, it seemed like a good idea. Like the social media started kicking and I was like, you can buy followers. Like, and I wasn't even doing EP stuff. I was doing motivational stuff at the time. Then I realized that, yo, this actually hurts your profile. And out of the four profiles I have on Instagram, not to mention LinkedIn and Facebook and all the other platforms, you know, uh, I have one account that I bought followers for. The rest of it is shadow band activity because I do gun stuff and sometimes post something political, but only on my life brand page. The mm. others, all the other pages are all organic, completely organic, you know, and they got 40,000 followers on, you know, two of them, one of them's at like 11,000 and uh, yeah. all that stuff, man. So I've had to build it from the ground up multiple times. You know, you know, Byron, I think the other thing too for you that I think is probably hard for people, and I don't know if it's like... Uh, whatever bias they have or uh, feelings is like, you don't come from kind of the stock that everybody seems to come (laughs) from in terms of EP or not kissing this ring or sucking this guy's balls or whatever. You're kind of like, Hey, this is me. And this is kind of my, the way that you're going about it. And and it's like, I think you said it before where it's like, this industry is kind of tribal, right? Like what's your, what's your, What's your your take on that? Like, I've heard you say that before. 
Yeah, man. I mean, so for me, you know, coming up in the game, it was like learning how to drink out of a fire hose. It was a straight up on the job uh, education. Guys were getting fired all the time, you know, for all kinds of different things. I was just praying and trying to stay out of the limelight long enough to survive and learn something. So uh, I didn't even go to my first EP school until I was in the game for seven years. I had already done, you know, like, a few dozen countries per year on repeat. I hit 60 some odd countries that first year and was just traveling like crazy. The detail started out at 12 guys, dropped down to two guys. Like it was a bloodbath. Um, and so I learned these guerrilla tactics, guerrilla survival tactics, and then learned how to make them work enough to depend on them. So then went to a school, went to some schools, did some things. And what I learned was amazing things at these schools. But what I also learned was what I have to bring to the game is this kind of non-conventional third world country guerrilla warfare, like pocket advance, like how to do it on the fly, solo, one man, two man mm -hmm. kind of situation. And so that's when I was like, yo, I, you know, I think I, I have something to contribute with regards to my school, with regards to training day. It was like, well, you know, you're this young guy. One of my friends laughed in my face and was like, no one's going to listen to you, bro. You're too young, you know? And I remember just being like, well, I think I have something that I can contribute. And that contribution is the guerrilla tactics that it's taken for me to survive and then, you know, work multiple clients and be able to have books I can depend on if something happens in the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that then sets me up to be like, well, you know, I guess I'm here. And one of my goals is to be unbiased, free agent, and to just you know, it's funny because it's like all my brands are about everyone else. You know what I'm saying? The mm -hmm. podcast, I'm interviewing other great people who've done way more than me in the game. And my whole entire premise is let's elevate the industry with this guy's awesome experience. My my live events, seven subject matter experts. I'm not teaching anything. I'm not teaching anything. I don't want to be the king. You know what I mean? I want to create a product that everyone can can benefit from because I'm not that cool. I'm a grunt marine who can do EP good. You know what I'm saying? And it's still got a bunch to learn and loves learning and loves creating things that can help other people learn and get what they want out of their careers, you know? Um, so it's, it's, it's been really interesting and it has put me in a position where I'm like, well, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I owe everything to God and my mentors and the relationships like with you guys, but it's nice not to have to be belonging to any of the gangs or any of the tribes, any of the denominations in the game. Yeah, it's kind of like if you're not part of this tribe and everybody kind of looks at you in, in some way. And I had that experience when I came in because I was some young little shit talker. And you weren't uh, even military or law yeah, enforcement. Yeah, Neither yeah. of you guys are. That's yeah, the that's the yeah. funny thing about every, all of it. Yeah. Me. So like if you see in the EP pretenders thing, you know, yeah. we like we even say like we're not out there trying to get Blackwater type jobs because that's not us. You know, yeah. we're not even qualified for that. So it's like, you, you know, I always tried to look at if somebody's going to hold me down or beat me down in any way, I look at it as like, okay, what is the worst shit that they're going to say about me? And, and it's like, I know, I know what it is. So right. I might as well say it myself. So then yeah. what power do you have over me? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like right. deuces, you know, mm -hmm. essentially. And that's the power of authenticity, you know? Yeah. And you can look in the mirror, you can respect yourself, you know how strong you are and you know how weak you are, you know what you can yeah. do good. And that's yeah. the difference between confidence and arrogance, you know, and it's a fine line. You know, I think I always try to make sure I'm not in that arrogance quadrant, you know, but when you're, when you're creating things constantly, it cleanses you because you can create something on a given day, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you can put that boat in the water and watch it sink. And you're like, man, I, that was the coolest stinking boat ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and no one cares, you know? No, yeah. You know, I've, I've, I've been there several times, mm -hmm. you know, people always, um, I don't know. Sometimes you create something that you think is really, really good. Right. And you know yourself that, Hey man, I really put myself out for this. Mm -hmm. And you can't, for the life of you, get other people to think that it's cool. You can't sell it for the hell of it. And um, <laughs> you just don't understand it, right? And then other yeah. times, um, and, and for me, it's like, on other times, I feel like we didn't really do anything that special, right? But mm -hmm. everybody thinks it's it's the coolest thing ever, right? <laughs> right. You got to figure that out with yourself. And I guess that's the entrepreneurial path, right? It is. Because as long as you care for it, and you did the best you could with it and, and stuff like that, right? Either it uh, it's going to last or it's going to break, right? But does it really matter? 
right? right? Because you'll get some home runs and and she, you you sometimes you you won't hit the ball. Yeah. And and that's just it, right? And and from my own experience right now, starting something brand new and coming out with something brand new where you have to mm -hmm. put yourself out one more time and all of that stuff, right? Yeah. It's kind of like scary still, right? Yeah. And and then you still just have to be like, "Hey, you know what? Either it's going to work or it's not going to work." And and who is other people to judge me, right? Right. Um that's yeah. It's 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 an interesting game. It's a really that, interesting game. That's a one, that's the one thing. Um, not to fillet uh, Christian, but um, the one thing I I like about him and how how long I've known him, he truly does not give a shit what anybody thinks. Yeah. You know, he's like uh, he walks to kind of the beat of his own drum. Mm -hmm. He's got his his thing, and that's it. It's really uh, refreshing to um have worked hand in hand with him as close as uh, him and i have been throughout the years yeah. um because i'm kind of the same way and uh yeah. it's pretty cool and i and i like being around um those types of people it's just authentic you know yeah it's I also think it's also a question about if if you choose that way you also gotta sometimes choose to give more room to people mm -hmm. than you should because if you really truly believe these things you also for the most part believe that um you shouldn't judge other people until you know them or you know the whole story or, or whatever. And then again, I mean, it's not for me to judge anybody publicly because I, I, I don't know, right? And, you know, I'm sure there's people who have done so much more than me out there that makes me an EP pretender, right? Yeah. So who who am I at the end of the game? I'm, I'm just me and I can just tell people about what I know and what worked for me and, and yep. what I think. And if people want to listen to that and read that and, and don't read that, it's really all I can do. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think that's really it, man. I think that, you know, that who am I question, you know, it's, it's one of the things that I've kind of been like, Hey, you know, I'm just a dude that wanted to make a contribution that was like, I think I'm going to do a podcast, you know, and then I got a little bit more ballsy and was like, I think I could do live events. And then, which I was insane. I was completely insane. I had no idea what I was talking about. I've learned, I've learned a lot trying to make these things work. And then I'm like, I think I could put a school together, you know, and, and, and that whole premise of how scary it is every time it never goes away. And wow. now, and then you become this, I, now I, you know, and I've become this person that's like turned on by it. Like, I'm like, if I'm not, a, if I'm not scared a little bit, then I'm not pushing that fear is a target indicator. It lets me know that, um, Hey dude, you're, you're on the there, edge. There's an old saying that uh, goes something like it's only scary till you jump, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's what this game's all about. Having the balls to try to give birth to what it is that's inside of you. You know, yep. that's beautiful. Yep, yep, so. Yep. So. I love that you said balls to give birth. I think that's awesome. It's just, it, it crosses it all up. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. <laughs> right? No, my wife good. always, my always, my wife um, always tells me when I go, yeah, you have to have balls. She goes, balls are, are fragile. You know what I mean? Like, you got to have a vagina to really know, you know, have some strength <laughs> there. And I'm like, you know what, honey? You're right. You're right on that. You guys are probably both hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she thinks I'm ridiculous and rolls her eyes, but uh, I, I have some yeah. charm to Byron. <laughs> no i know you, you got it right um yeah. no that's good stuff man i couldn't agree more you know it, it's it's interesting and for be the man in the ring i really respect and and you know guys that are right or wrong you know guys that disagree with me i respect anyone who's willing to step in the ring and be vulnerable especially mm -hmm. in this industry knowing you're gonna have to fight the different gangs and tribes or people are gonna challenge you you know uh, I honor anybody who is willing to be the man in the ring and be authentic. Cause then, you know, you ain't got nothing to hide. You're just, you're doing what you believe is right. You know, I, I, I commend anybody who has that. Thing. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's like you and I talking and uh, you know, offline and you're like, Hey, how about this detail? I heard you were on this detail. Yeah. So you're part of this thing. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is how I messed up. And this is what I did wrong. Yeah. Yeah. This is what happened. And I feel like there's not too many people out there that, um, can do that you know what i mean yeah. and i remember like talking to you and being like hey man i'm sharing like personal shit here like don't say anything and then i was like thinking about it like after the fact like who cares you know what i yeah. mean like why have anybody have any power over me for anything right yeah you gotta you gotta embrace it and so it's always like that thing in my mind where it's like i, 
I'm worried about what people think or how I'm going to be judged and, you know, being on the cliff and just being like, fuck it. I, at, at this point, I don't care. And so it's like, I want to surround myself with those people. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, you look at what we wrote when we posted this on our LinkedIn, it was like shots fired when we put out the EP protectors thing. <laughs> you guys are like, push the little red button. Boom. Yeah, like, <laughs> you, you know, it's, it's, it's not like we are wanting <laughs> to, to be these big disruptors, but it's like, we know that this is organically is yeah. going to take, um, take form in some way where it's going to drive the conversation. And then it's just like, Hey, let's have debate about it. Let's talk about it. Let's see what everybody thinks and, and put it out there. So I'm pleased with that response. Heck yeah. yeah. So, um, no, man, I, I couldn't agree more. What would you say about, let's dig into some of these tenants, man. I, got, okay. I The one last thing I will say about the haters is I love the haters because they have a superpower to see actual vulnerabilities. So whenever I pick up, whenever someone's popping shots, like, I'm taking notes, man. I'm literally like, you know what? Because they will see your, they'll see your stuff and I'm still learning, you know? And I think there's a lot to be said for being able to, no matter what vessel it comes through, let him who's without sin throw the first stone. Go ahead, throw your stones. But you're showing me vulnerabilities. Sometimes if it's not just hate, 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 some of it's just poisonous. Uh, yeah. They really actually can help you. You know, they help me sometimes. And I'm like, you know what? That's a good point, man. Yeah. I'll just get, I'll just improve the game. I'm going to make 859 moves by next month and I'll just mm -hmm. continue to improve the game, you know? Mm -hmm. And that comes from being on the journey long enough to believe that you can change, you know, mm -hmm. and make these different and make corrections. You know, that's one of the things that with my clients that I, I they've told me is, you know, Byron, we really appreciate you because you can make, you can make corrections. And I'm like, Hey, I can do anything. I can do anything. If you let me know what it is, we can make it work. I can make it work. You know, and they're like, and that that's been a huge deliverable. Um, but yeah, man. So so one of these that jumps out at me is posting photos of themselves on coverage with principals and manage uh, and managing to get uh, oh so casual oh oh so casually into the media. So basically posting photo, photos when you're on coverage and then just like laying back and being like another day in the office. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I have friends that post that shit. I have a, a yeah. close friend that just posted that. Today, <laughs> I was just thinking, he's my boy too. He's a good dude. Shots fired. No, he's yeah. a great dude. But Yeah. Um, um, yeah, you know, I just saw one um, like today. It was some guy with, you know, John Travolta getting out of his airplane and like walking like, yeah, it was one of my favorite photos. It's me and John Travolta. And I'm yeah. just thinking if I, if I like met John Travolta and I said, Hey, do you know this dickhead? He'd probably have no idea who the guy is. You know yeah. what I mean? Who knows? He's probably the guy walking him from the airplane or on the red right. carpet or, or whatever it is. So it's just like, ah, oh, it's just like, I want to, I cringe every time I see that because it's like, Dude, you're clout chasing. Like, what are you right. trying to do? Like, right. we even we even you know say it in, in there. Like, you know, what are you doing? Are you trying to get laid? Like, why are you why are you why are you posting these things? Like, does, yeah. does it make you make you feel cooler or more? Um, I don't. I, I guess on top of it when you do it, but it's just like they can't help themselves. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, we see it all the time. I've seen uh, Elijah Shaw did <clears throat> drop this one on me one time and. I, I, I took pause and I think I even dropped a video about it. Cause I was, I was impressed honestly with something that made me think outside the box. And he's like, you know, in different parts of the industry, sometimes, you know, some client demographics may like to see who you've been with, you know, and I'm kind of like, okay, now he wasn't condoning it or saying that it was like the smart thing to do or didn't breach operational security. But I think he was highlighting that. And this is something that, uh, really kind of when I see someone do it that I have influence over, I hit them up and I'm like, Hey bro, <laughs> this has implications, yeah. you know, let me explain. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of the guys, especially ones that haven't come from, you know, a background or a pedigree, the EP world, you know, maybe they're in that, you know, uh, you know, music industry, or maybe they're just coming up in the game from like a bouncer situation, or maybe that's the way that their, their homies run. They don't know any better, you know? And they think that gives them clout, but don't realize the operational security components. My thing is too, you're gonna tie your destiny to the client, 
not only are you increasing their visibility, but now that client has an issue, you know, or you have an issue, a personal issue, and everyone's making those associations and it can get toxic in like two seconds. Well, so yeah. You never see any, you ain't never seen me with any client. You see me with the celebrities because I was actually geeking out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. my there's argument, also, sorry, go ahead, Christian. Well, there's also the other thing that people tend to forget, right? There's probably a lot of people sitting back and go, hey, Christian and Garrett, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I do whatever I want to do because it works for me. And you know what? Yep, that's Those what guys, I, I have tremendous respect for. Yeah. Right? Because we just speak our opinion. That right. doesn't mean it's right or wrong and doesn't mean that we force anybody to listen to it. So right. if it works for you and you think it's a great thing to do, by all means, keep doing it. I mean, if it gets I, you paid. I, I don't think it's the smartest thing in the world. And, and a true story is I'm living in a town where um, a lot of my clients live. And one time I was sitting with my daughter and um, one of the clients walked in that I didn't work for anymore. And she asked me, hey, dad, do you think he knows your name? And I go, mm -hmm. no, he's not. And she go, ain't that weird when you travel with these people for so long? And I go, I don't think so. I'm actually pretty happy if he does. Did your job pretty. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. But we're all different, right? And we mm -hmm. all work in different parts of the industry, right? And that that's the other thing that I sometimes think people have to remember in all of this, right? That is that we come from a relatively un uh, tied down and un kind of like dictated Regimented. industry, yeah. right? There is no standard for what is EP. There's a lot of mm -hmm. kind of like facets of EP that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And maybe what I'm saying and talking about and stuff like that doesn't work for that part of the industry. Then it's just, yeah. I'm poorly educated on it. would love to be educated on it, right? Because that way I yep. can understand it better. But I don't. Yeah. Right? And I speak my mind based off what works for me and what I think and what I've learned. So a lot yeah. of times, some of these things, it might be Jared and I's opinion, and we could easily be wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. I mean, uh, listen, Christian's a lot nicer than I am in a lot of things. I think that whole thing of telling everybody who your clients are is douchey as hell. And, I think, way, and I think there's ways that you can get around it. Like, I worked with a client recently that wanted to see well, what clients have you worked with? And I'm like, well, you know, I've signed NDAs with all of these clients. Right. He's like, well, I just want to see what you look like in the field. But then I'm like, I got to go into like my co collection of photos of me, you know, uh, taken publicly. Cause I understand that, uh, that ask, right. If a client wants to say, I want to see how you represent yourself in the field. Right. So then I'm having to take pictures of this is me out so-and-so and I can blur faces or choose not to blur faces or whatever, or, if you're legitimate in any way, like, I think you can get, you know, there's other ways of being able to be like, this is my, my clientele base. And these are the type of clients I have instead of being like, Hey, this is so-and-so when I protected so-and-so like, I, I, I don't know. I, I call me old fashioned in some ways. I, I don't like that. I don't like the, the way that that's done. I don't think it's right, but who am I? I'm some fucking asshole. Like everybody is right. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, um, it is, it's a mix, you know, it comes from our pedigree, you know, the guys that raised me were like, yo, an EP, you never name drop. The second you name drop, they know you're a rookie and they know that that name you just dropped was a big deal for you. So that mm -hmm. right there tells me that that's the biggest and best thing you've ever done. And it was like, a, it was like an occasion maybe, you know, so that's the school I came from. But then when, you know, Elijah dropped that game on me, like, hey, man, that put foods on that puts food on some guy's table in the game. I was like, man, well, that you know what? I was kind of like, what was me? Kind of like, <laughs> it's like, this is a very interesting conversation to have. It's like the it's like the EP agent, you know, CP. We got 800 initials for the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. Protective agent versus the bodyguard. You know, my school of thought, my the school I came up in was like bodyguards are bouncers, they're knuckle draggers. Don't associate yourself as a bodyguard. You're an executive protection agent. While well, I'm protecting executives one day, maybe I'm doing something another day. You know, how you know how does this translate? And uh, you know, he mentioned he was like, the reality of the game is, what term do the clients understand? You want to get a point across really quick. You say bodyguard. The, the clients don't come from that same tribalistic gang, you know, mentality. And if you superimpose your acronyms, you might have less effective communication. And I'm like, you know what? You're mm -hmm. messing up my game right now. But I, I was kind of like, man, this is wisdom. So I'm always taking things, trying to evolve. Right, Christian? 
No, it, it, that, that that is so true, and and it's really funny because um, me coming back from from Europe back in the days, and when EP first blew up and stuff like that, we didn't get really yeah. it because we were running with the acronym of close protection, right? Mm-hmm. And if you look up universal of words, I mean, bodyguard is a universal word. It's one of the few mm-hmm. words that are understood all over the planet, right? So I totally yeah. get where people come from. And I think for a long period, there was a lot of uh, hating on the word bodyguard and all of that stuff, which <clears throat> I personally think executive protection is a stupid acronym too, right? Mm-hmm. But it, it, it's the best that we have. And, and, and you know what's really funny? After we got that acronym, yeah. there's this tendency of... <laughs> Another side of EP people that want to make us way more than we are, kind of pretend like we're almost accountants or lawyers. And right. I love when people say, well, they don't have our type of education. Oh, you mean the one, two, three weeks class that we just passed? It's kind of like going to beauty school and calling yourself a doctor. <laughs> get them. It is. Get them. It's like, at the end of the day, let's, let's, let's not get up on these high horses, right? Mm-hmm. Because... At the end of the day, we, we, we are what we are, right? And, and, and if we really want to lift up the industry, it actually starts with all of us sticking together and getting organizations going where we could kind of like sit down and figure out what is the industry. I mean, in, yeah. in, in Europe, where um, the regulatory things are a lot different, for instance, anything that's volunteer-based is not even considered to be real, right? Because... Mm-hmm. If you go in and look at it, you're not a professional. You're kind of an amateur because you're not paid for it, right? So coming over wow. here where a lot of um, stuff is very different, pe- pe- I-, I think sometimes we just need to learn more before we judge, right? Because there's so many yeah. right and wrong things. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, 100%. I think that's that's really what the conversation's all about. I will tell you a story about a legit EP pretender, though, that got burned at the stakes right next to me during a job interview. This was so, it was so salty, man. And, you know, God bless him. And I can talk about this because, you know, you know, God bless him. He's not here anymore. But I'm sitting here in this interview and uh, we're, we're both doing this interview and this is me and a guy that I met at another detail and he told me all these awesome stories and like I knew he was full of it most of the time but like he was one of those guys like every 16th lie we would hit gold and we'd make like some obscene amount of money in a week out in Florida doing some awesome thing and I'd be like you know what I'm just gonna keep you around we used to code name ghost we call him the ghost because he would literally just ghost on you and like you wow. wouldn't even know <laughs> what he would do you know, one of one of my great favorites was um I don't know if you know, but I've done hundreds and hundreds of missions all over Africa, right? Yeah. And I used to run into these guys that would say, well, you know, we only carry long guns when we run on gun in Africa. And I'm like, really? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes we get paid in uncut diamonds. Oh, really? He told me the same stuff, man. The uncut diamonds thing? Oh, my God. First of all, nobody outside a laboratory can really cut a diamond. So that's probably not true. Yeah. Second of all, I'm not saying that they're not there. Yeah, I just never met him, you know. I, exactly. So I'm I'm sitting here with this guy in this interview, and we're both dressed. I'm in a suit. He shows up late, gets out of a cab, walks in, you know, and he's just like got this swag. Sits down, and he's like 15 minutes late, and I'm sitting there with my little tie on, trying to carve my you know my name out in the game. And you know, the interviewer's like, uh, so how you doing? What's going on? You know, you're like 15 minutes late, and he's like, yeah. Just got off of a jet coming back from, uh, we'll just not say the name of the company. He's like this big name company that does stuff overseas. I uh, got here as soon as I could, you know, and uh, the interviewer's like, oh, really? For what company? He's like, yeah, this company that's awesome right now. And sure enough, man, my man was like, okay, interesting. Picks up the phone, starts yep. calling, starts to dial in, dials up the company, the, the CEO, because it's a small game. And it's like, hey, do you have a such and such and such and such cool guy? And, and, <laughs> and I'm looking at my dude and my dude's turning white. And I'm like, this is going to happen right in front of me. <laughs> and sure enough, he's like, oh, no, no, you don't? Are you sure? He's like, yeah, I'm sure. And he's like, he's like, where's your passport? And the dude's like, oh, uh, uh, uh. he's like, you just came from uh, overseas doing gangster hood rat stuff, right? So where's your passport? Dude's like, uh, uh, wait, I left it in there. And he comes up with some lie. He's like, they don't know you. They have no idea who you are. He's like, get out of my office and never come back. Burns this dude at the stakes, man. And I'm just sitting here like, 
someone just died next to me. <laughs> like it was, it was so catastrophic. And that I think is a really good uh, uh, depiction of an EP pretender because I, we've all done the interviews, we've all seen the resumes, and a lot of the things in your article are things that I was just like, I was laughing, but I was also sad because people are trying to do these things frequently to get yeah. into the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, that happens all the time. I, I couldn't tell you how many times um, I've been somewhere and everybody's like, yeah, you know, you know, talk about their client or what you do. And they're like, yeah, you know, I'm like, oh, who are your clients? And they name you know, somebody that happens to be a client and has been a client for years. And you're like, ah, this guy's just full of shit. And a lot of times I'm just like, cool, man, that's awesome. Should yeah. be proud. You but, know? But, but you know, it's also, um, I, I, I kind of get where it comes from though, because um, Jared, you and I, I think have had this conversation in the past, you know, when, when you're going to hire people, you sit there and you look at uh, resumes from people that are trying to break into the industry. Yeah. You look at their resumes and you almost feel, um, Kind of like, I don't know <laughs> what it's called, but I feel, no, but I feel bad, right? Because yeah. I'm sitting here trying to hire people and here's somebody who has done the most incredible things for the country and, and for the world and they served in the most incredible units and, and they've done all of these great things, right? Mm -hmm. It just has so little to do with EP. Yeah. That I much rather sometimes have to go, no, I'm not much rather, but sometimes I have to go with the guy who has a... Uh, bachelor degree in project management <laughs> right. because that's what's needed for this job right and unfortunately there is a lot of the fantasies still that you need to have all these incredible 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 backgrounds for making it in, yeah. in this industry and luckily most of the people who have this industry they're definitely not pretenders right but right. if you look at it from the outside and you are a pretender it's easy to try and kind of like, oh, I want to be that guy. So I'm going to make up my own shit too, because then I'm going to yeah. slide right through the interview. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really sad because a lot of times those guys are kind of like, um, effing it up for a lot of good people. Yeah, no, 100%, man. I, and that's, you know, that's one of the things that I teach in my courses. You got to be straight up on your, on your resume. Uh, and your resume is not always what's going to get you into that position, but, uh, it's like, it's, 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 I think one of those things that's seductive that think guys think that can help them get into the game. And you said something else that was really important too, was it's not about your sexy background. If I, I, every single, almost every single week get asked like, Hey, you know, like I really want to get into the game. Uh, I don't have military law enforcement. Is it possible? And I reference both of you guys and I reference Elijah and I'm like, look, some of the best guys I know, the guy that got me into the game, Luke, you know, like the, some of the best guys I know in this game, they don't have military law enforcement background. So the, you know, the cup's half empty, the cup's half empty for them, you know, but those aren't necessarily the skills that we're even looking for. You know, I, I, I like seeing that you were barista at Starbucks because I know you understand service and you're going to have less cognitive dissonance when my client asks you to go do something that you don't think has to do with security, you know, and you're not, you know, you're still, you're not like, you don't smell like war and you're not still uh, trying to get over the, the jump from being a warlord to a guardian, you know, you know, psychologically, or you weren't in law enforcement for 20 years doing everything with a badge. And now when my client's like, yo, we're leaving in five minutes, go put the car seats in the car. And you're like, <laughs> you know, like there's that disconnect's not there, you know? And so one of the things I do want people to really pick up from this interview is this market is wide open to the civilian public. If oh, you are yeah. willing to do the work, Oh yeah, of, of getting better and getting what the skills it takes. Yeah, for yeah. sure, for sure. One, uh, did you have something on that, or you want me? No, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, man, for sure. Some of the best in the business don't have those things, and some. And to finish on that, some of the guys I've seen fall in this game are guys I would gladly go to war side by side with right now, but couldn't make the psychological jump from being hardcore to being. EP efficient, you know what I'm saying? Because they lack the scoff skills and they couldn't gain cultural equity uh, in their in that new that might, world. Might be the next block called EP efficient, huh? Hey, <laughs> boom, boom, you know. There you go. Uh, what? Let's dig into this trying to be friends with the client thing. Yeah, uh, I've seen that a few times. Uh, one of the details I worked with, um, I worked on. Um, 
it was like, no, it's like, um, it's like the suck up shit. You know, they knew like the principles into whatever self-help guru or for all you Jesus people, God stuff, and then has to like throw that in on every quote or everything that, you know, when they're, we're doing an update and it's like, Hey, I'm trying to bond with you client. I'm trying to get closer. <laughs> just like, Let me in. You, you, you're a, you know, you're a, a jock sniffer, like lock, knock it off. You know, like, what are you, what yeah. are you doing? Um, or, you know, liking their, you know, Instagram photos and, and everything. It's just like, I, I mean, you see that all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nothing, nothing new, right? We talk about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have someone that Christian or you want me? To well, it it's, quick? um, it's, 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 it's one of those things where, um, again, it, it is super hard, right? Because once you come into the protective details and stuff like that, people, um, some clients may even, um, embrace it a little bit. Right. And it's so mm -hmm. easy to fall into this trap if you don't listen to people who's done it before or been there before or whatever. Right. And, you know, I, I, I've seen it a lot with people who um, kind of leave a company and go work for the clients directly and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And and then if you look at it, um, again, I hate when this makes me sound old, but after 30 years, you've, you've seen a lot of things, right? And, and right. You know, a lot of people go in-house, they go work for the clients, and more than half the time, it, it, it doesn't work, right? Wow. Because, um, well... I, I have a whole spiel for the people that want to do it, right? Just like I have a whole spiel for the people that, that gets too close to the client or kind of fall into the favorite syndrome of, oh, it's just me and it has to be me and I have yeah, to be in the and, and the client can't function without me and all of that stuff, right? And, and as soon as you're in that boat, you're kind of going downwards and it's just a question about how long time you're going to be kept around on that detail, right? And if yeah. you're in one detail there's a tendency of you going on doing the same thing on the next detail as well. And mm -hmm. it's just not a, a healthy way of, uh, of working your details. Yeah. It's not a healthy way of, of surviving in the game. And it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. I think it's, uh, it's, it can be a natural thing that people think will get them safe. You know what I mean? Like, well, if the client likes me, I'm good, you know, and I'm oh, trying yeah. to teach guys, look, dude, you know who you need to have, you need to have, you need to have great, you need to have a professional relationship with your client because that's where the safety is. The second they feel obligated to say hello to you, you're one more relationship that's stopping them from being productive. You know what I'm saying? And so this, 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 it taxes the clients, you know what I'm saying? And, and I've found that the only way to survive is to foster that professional relationship. I'm not here to be friends. Oh, yeah. I'm here to work. You don't have to say hello to me. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the ETA, the greeting of the day, the ETA, and then I'm going to drive, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And you do you and you do it safer because I'm here. And how can I contribute to that mission? Exactly. <laughs> you yeah. know? And, and one of the things people don't realize is our clients are experts in yeah. human behavior a lot of the time. Yeah. So you don't think they've experienced the guy that's trying to suck up or um, the person that's trying to be their friend or the person right. that's trying to like, they've seen so many iterations in they gotta that. Deal with it all day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like everyone's telling yes, man in them and yeah. trying to get in with them and like, Hey, you like pink. I like pink too. You know, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. the life. It's gross, you know, to them. So it's, 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 you actually, you know, after a while, you start to realize that, you know what, they would just probably appreciate me, respect me, and ultimately, I'll have that relationship with them if they know they can depend on me to be professional. And you know what? I've done that shit, too. So I'm yeah. an EP pretender. Yeah. You know, I, I've been like, how do I, I got this client that I can't relate to, and I don't understand, and whatever. And it's and, awkward. Yeah, and it's awkward, and, yeah. you know, like, what do I do? Like, I've done that shit. Yeah. Uh, I, we all have scars, right? We've got scars on our soul. Yeah. physical scars doing this job i mean i could we couldn't write this shit if we didn't live it and we and we we weren't yeah, part of it in some way yeah. the fun the, the other one too because it's it's like where you start you know it's where you start these are the good ideas you have after you before you've gotten your licks you know yeah uh, the other one that i see all the time that i try to warn guys against and i think these are so dangerous because you're like hey bro 
stop trying to be friends with the client. And they're like, yo, you trying to steal my shine, son? Yeah, yeah, trying yeah, to hold yeah. me back. And I'm like, yeah. my man, I'm trying to save you. And they can't see it. The other yeah. one is, I call it stepdad. You know what I'm saying? When like the kids come out and they're like, hey, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like trying to be ultra good with the kids. And yeah. I'm like, yo, the kids have parents. Like might even be an actual stepdad. Like just do your job, man. Just maybe give the kid a high five if he wants to give you a high five. But like, just do your job, man, because that's stepdadding. The clients are sensitive to people trying to use their kids to get close to them as well. And you're just skylining the heck out of yourself, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and the cool thing is that kids usually uh, yeah. kind of like doesn't play politics, right? right? So if the clients ask the kids, they usually tell the truth, you know, mm -hmm. you tend to forget that. And the other, the other one, I think that was, I don't think you guys mentioned this in the, in the article, but I think it's really something worth talking about is the guy, I feel like in the industry, and we kind of kind of went over this, but just because you haven't seen it done or you don't do it doesn't mean it's not real. You know, uh, I feel like sometimes people will do things or post things or talk about things. And it's like, people will be like, well, geez, I, you know, that can't be real. Cause I've never done it. I'm like, Are you kidding me, man? Like, how do we know this industry is like expanding uh, there was a Forbes article about how this industry is expanding. It's in like top five expansive uh, industries in the world right now. It's like supposed to double in the next decade. I'm like, there's different types of private security that have EP involved in them that are happening everywhere right now. Oh, yeah. You know, do, do you get that, Byron? Do you get like people are like, oh, you're faking it by what you're posting, or yeah. I don't use that gear, or I don't carry that gun, or whatever it is, like. Do you, you know have that? I, I don't really post much about EP with actually with guns, unless it's like an EDC type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. I do have people that'll look at my other content and be like, yeah, I've never done that in EP. That's not EP. But then I'm sitting there and I'm like, yo, I'd be on a private security detail every single week where I'm fully kitted out and or, you know, have a long rifle in a cold position. So like, homie, this is all gear I wear every single week in the private security format. And then, yeah, there's a principal involved. So I do do EP in full kit sometimes, you know, so I'm yeah. kind of like, you, See, know, you went over here, you said, uh, having a, a you know, a, a gun in a cold position. I have no fucking idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, do something there if you need it, you know, yeah. but, uh, yeah, man, no, I definitely run into that stuff. And I'm just kind of like, well, this is my reality. I don't know what to tell you. This is the internet. I ain't going to get, I try not to get in fights on the internet. Um, but and, and every once know, that, in a while that, I get really someone sad. says something and I'm like, you know what? You know what? And I tell my wife, I'm gonna take a few minutes tonight. Oh. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna go hey. ahead and descend into these comments but, real quick. <laughs> but you know, it's we we're, we're, we're all so kind of guilty and yeah, I sometimes you can ask Jared, I get all pissed off at my own friends, right? Yeah, the text messages like hey, so-and-so is going at it, and so-and-so on this and this piece <laughs> buy popcorn. And I'm like, no, I don't want to read it. I think it's embarrassing. And then eventually you log on to it anyway, and you're like, yep, you can't not. Already so long, and when you're as bad a reader as I am, you never catch up to what <laughs> you're even fighting about, right? Yeah. And I look at it, and I go like, what the hell the does hell this is happen? <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. See, I'm you know Christian again is more mature. I I'm you know if you're allowed to say retard anymore, which I'm not sure if you're allowed to. I like watching the fight. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I I enjoy the you know the kids going at it that have you know issues, and if if they you're like I don't know, man. I yeah. No, I like that. Call no, me call me crazy. Authenticity is big with me, though, man. So if it's something I'm saying I'm doing, I, I'm I'm planning to get into a fight before I post it. I'm like, hmm. if you guys want to come see me, then guess what? You can come see, me. <laughs> which I have to. I have to. I, God's working on me, you know. God's working on me. Yeah. <laughs> but that's it's it's funny that the industry's like that, you know. Uh, let's see what else do we have in here, man. There's there's a lot. I hope one day, you know, we can get past the denominations and the church gangs and all the all the little clicks, you know, and we can actually just be like, "Hey, uh, Byron, you should just be an you should be an atheist, and you don't have to worry about any of that stuff." Man. <laughs> well, I'll I'll think about that. Look at look at look at Christians laughing at his face. He's like, "I can't believe he said it." <laughs> right? Yo, what about this? 
Jared's liable to say anything, I've realized. Yeah. What about this uh, not knowing how to do in advance? What would you guys say about that one? I uh, Christian can talk on this. He just did. He, he's the advanced man. So Right. Well, I think, um, I, I, to be honest, I, I, I wish a lot of times people would stay more true to the profession than yeah. anything else, right? Because I literally think that it has worked for me, and I think it would work for a lot of other people if, and Jared can testament to this, I have a few rules that I live by. Mm-hmm. One is that we can only defeat him with good. We cannot mm-hmm. go down the hill of being bad. No matter yeah. what other people do to us, let's win it with good. Let's win it with embraces. Let's win him with positivity. Being, being good, good, positive people, right? Yeah. Second of Passion. all, I can't defeat politics, no matter what. The only thing I can do is defeat it with doing good work. And that this usually wins. True. It might take a little bit longer. So yes. if you stay true to the profession and mm-hmm. keep kind of embracing what it is that we do, no matter how you do it, because a lot of people think, oh, Christian, you work for these super high-end details that have these super high-end budgets. And yes, I've been lucky enough to be on some of the biggest details and run some of the biggest details and create some of the biggest details and all that. But you yeah. know what? That does mean I don't have tremendous respect for the one-man operator. I don't have tremendous yeah. respect. Or I, I have tremendous respect for the private investigator who does EP once in a while. I have respect for the people who come into the business. And I think that if if people want to seek to get better, yeah. my experience is that there's a lot of people out there that actually want to help, right? So ask for help so you know what you're doing and stay true mm-hmm. to the profession. And if you don't know how to do advanced work and you don't know how to do these things, you should probably maybe spend a little bit less time on LinkedIn mm. and actually read a couple of books or, or, or figure out who do the, to do the basics of what it is that we do, right? Yeah. Yeah, be humble enough to That's say, to say, like, I'd rather hire somebody 10 out of 10 times. Somebody's like, hey, you know what? I haven't done this, but I want to learn and I think I have some relative experience right. that would translate. Um, that is honest instead of like bullshitting their way each time, right? And uh, you know, people are you know, I, I've I've had the luxury of working with a lot of people, and I always think that I'm the the uh, dumbest person in the room in terms of like our clients that are like these you know top of celebrities or fashion or you know tech giants or whatever and it's just like they have a lot more going on up there than i do and and there's been many times where i'm like i'm sorry you've used a a 20 dollar word i don't know what that means um can you explain it to me and i just think that more people should be again going back to the self-aware thing like know what you know and 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 be honest about what you don't know and and ask for help i mean Christian's like the the, the uh, epitome of that, you know. Yeah. He'll be like, I know this, but I have no fucking idea what that is. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. help me with a lot that. of things. There's a lot of things I have no idea about. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, you know, I tell people the only thing that I'm really good at is talking shit. That's about it. And <laughs> I've made a career out of it, and I've got into this field because I I can talk a little bit, but like. Besides that, I don't think I'm really good, that good at, at much. You know what I mean? And I'm, and I'm, and, and it may sound like a joke, and it kind of is, but mm-hmm. it's also kind of true. It's like a a double edged sword, so to speak, and yeah. and it's funny and everything, but it's also true. You know? Not. I think it's. I think it's so important and so grounding, though, because I look at myself the same way. I was like the little kind of chubby kid who was never like that fast or that cool or that anything. Like I was like, so I, I am like so mediocre at everything. I got TBIs. I'm dyslexic. You know what I'm saying? I don't read good. I cannot spell. I don't write ever anymore. <laughs> you know, I use auto text and, and, you know, I can get my school boy on. I'm an author. I have a master's. But at the same time, which was like, like, like one of the hardest things I had to do, but I had to do it because I was afraid of it, you know, but inside, I know how mediocre I am, you know, and you'll never hear me say I'm the biggest, the baddest and the best. And I think that that knowing grounds me 
And that's why I'm up in the morning working out. And that's why I'm trying to be better. And that, that knowing of like, Hey dude, there's a fat version of you chasing you. There's a stupider version. There's an arrogant version of you chasing you. You know, that stuff keeps me grounded. Like you will mess up. Like I'll go run a route like eight, nine times because I'll forget stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm up in the morning walking the hotel routes because I know how this brain works and I'll forget stuff, you know? So, and my dudes are like, don't you got it? You got it. And I'm like, I may just, let me just, I'm just going to walk it one more time. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, just let your boy walk one more time, you know, because what you just said, I think is really what we're talking about. We're talking about EP pretenders. We're talking about people that are pretending they have it all together, but they're not self-aware enough and or humble enough to know how imperfect they are to go and get the help they need. And then clients suffer, our industry suffers, and they do things like market themselves incorrectly, misrepresent themselves and do damage. What do you think, Chris? Mm -hmm. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's tough to confront your own insecurities, right? Yeah. And I think we all, we all have them one way or another, right? Yeah. Christian doesn't have any insecurities. He just has oh. axes and weapons everywhere. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Like, just, uh, uh, I told you I'm a pretend Viking, just like everybody else who lives in Scandinavia. <laughs> I've, I've been at one or two meetings where uh, Christian will uh, take one of those uh, those axes that you see and just decide to bash it on the desk. Hack uh, the desk and be like, get it together, guys. He's also been known to take his shirt off in meetings, which is really awesome. Don't really? Um, you can never prove yeah. that that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome. But I think, yeah, you know what I think? I think humility is a weapon. I think humility is something, humility and self-awareness ultimately is really, a lot of these things can cure that, you know, and it's knowing, knowing what you don't know, knowing what you do know, having accurate confidence because inaccurate confidence is arrogance. Knowing what you do know, being confident in it, not overselling yourself and just being legit, you know, I think that's what this article is really about, man. And uh, I don't know, man, I think humility is a weapon that 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 will that breeds smarter and more genuine people and that's what we need in the industry you know yeah. it's really it's actually really funny because i thought that the ep pretenders was the least funny of all the articles that we wrote that's how it works man it's weird <laughs> and then boom this morning i'm like i can't believe this is getting this kind of traction yeah yeah, yeah. and it's like we you know like uh, it's like setting this expectation too. like, not everything that we're going to write about is going to be quote unquote viral, you know, and we right. don't want to have to be the, you know, trying to, to write stuff to be funny all the time. It has to be authentic. And we, we talk about other, um, you know, other blogs. Like one of the, the, I think the first blog we did was yeah, what we nice. titled like dear client, where it was, us just talking about everything that you'd want to say to a client beforehand, before yes, everything gets great, fucked, man. before everything gets fucked up, before <laughs> you know um, they hate you or they <laughs> you know love you or whatever. But You're these are things yeah. that we want to say. And so to me, I'm like that, that was like a great blog that I thought, and then mm -hmm. this one has the has the traction. So you never know. Nope. Yeah. No, that's how the game works, man. You're in your lab and you're like, this is the best boat ever. And you're like making all your little things and like no one cares about any of them. And then boom, like on accident, you're like, whoa, yo, it's champagne, son. Like this is yeah. the one, you know, and you're just sitting there like, okay, well, I guess we're going to go with it, you know. But, you know, then again, that's the story of my life, right? All yeah. day long, I crack up, up my, by my own jokes, right? And nobody else is <laughs> funny most of the time. They just look at you like you have a weird accent and you're half stupid. But by the time you get over it, I guess, and you can laugh at your own jokes and don't care if other people laugh at them or not, right? Yeah, Christian does that to me all the time. He's like, you're not funny. I go, oh, well, I think I'm funny, so fuck you. And <laughs> I'm entertained, so, you know. Yes. That's what it's all about, entertaining Jared, right? Right. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I think we got some good content out of this thing. Do you guys have anything else you guys want to hit, uh, drill down on? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think it's good, man. I think it's yeah. Good. I think we just shout out, you know, EP Ramblers, EP hyphen yes. hyphen ramblers dot com. Yes. Check us out. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, follow us on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, we want to participate with you. We want um, you guys to DM us, message us, mm -hmm. tell us we're, we're we're full of shit. We'll we'll talk about it. Um, yeah. We'll even write about it. So reach out to us. Yeah, I think. Go ahead. Did you have anything, Christian? No, I'm good. I'm good.
Awesome, man. You I have think to remember, I'm just riding Jared's coattail. So <laughs> I, I, to kind of like breathe his air. That's right. You That's know? awesome. I you just take are... up a lot of empty space. <laughs> hey, I, I'm I'm the second prettiest here, man. So you know, get out of here, man. Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I guess yeah. For everyone listening, I think if you guys haven't found this blog, go check it out. The links are going to be in the show notes. And you know, at the end of the day, the clients may not be able to recognize it, but you know if you're pretending or not. And I think all of our mission needs to be our missions need to be no matter what area or demographic of our industry you belong in, no matter how your your camouflage or your tackle works or your marketing works or whatever to get your world to work, make sure you're legit because we're all actually sharing a destiny with this thing. You know, the things you guys do have, have they have implications to the whole industry. When you lowball a contract, when you promise things you can't deliver, I can't tell you how many details I've been on where the clients, it looks like they just got out of an abusive relationship. I'm just doing my job. And they're just like, oh, wow, this is amazing. The last guy did X, Y, Z. I'm like, who was the last guy? You know, like, so we share in everyone's shortcomings. So be legit. You know, uh, I think that's what the name of this, that's really what this conversation is about. So. Right. Absolutely. That was cool. That was really cool, Byron. <laughs> I love Chris. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Yeah, man. No, that's awesome. Well, hey, it's been an honor spending time with you, gentlemen. We got to do this again. You guys drop some cool stuff. We got to go back and dig into it. I think I think this is this is a really good format for some stuff for sure. Well, I hope no matter what, if there should be a closing comment, and you know when you say it last, you can kind of like say it. Yeah. I just hope it make people smart. That's all. <laughs> a lot of times we need that instead of being so serious about everything we do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Make make fun of yourself. Like you know, like show vulnerability. At yes. The end of the day, man. Yeah. We got, so many times we got to be so serious. So let's laugh. Let's joke. Let's enjoy each other, man. You know, Jared's Jared's the joker in the industry. Why so serious? <laughs> I, know, I am. I guess right. I'm pretty serious. Christian. Sometimes I get too serious, and then Christian will make fun of me, and then he's like, "Oh, are you gonna dry your eyes now, Jared? You're gonna are you gonna cry, Jared?" <laughs> and I get it. so fucking mad at him. <laughs> look awesome. at him. Look at his face. You can see. <laughs> That's awesome. So, well, solid, gents. It's been an honor. I okay. agree with, with you, man. Vulnerability is strength, y'all. So find right. help, find answers. Cool. Hey, are you going to stop recording so then we can really talk now? Well, <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, y'all. Go find this blog. We'll see All you right. in the next episode. Boom. Thanks. Yo, if you're a private security professional wanting to take your game to the next level, go to executiveprotectiontrainingday.com to check out my personal success package for private security professionals. Check it out, executiveprotectiontrainingday.com. And remember, y'all, hard skills do save lives, but soft skills get you paid. Boom. Boom. And to support this podcast, go to executiveprotectionlifestyle.com and contribute to our Patreon account. That Patreon account is what helps me make this podcast possible, contributing to this brand, what we're doing here, making it so that I can bring better guests on, making it so that we can plan more events and just expand the contribution to the private security industry and also to make an America a safer place. Do whatever you can, contribute whatever you can because it makes all of these things possible. Thanks for those contributions. Yo, and before we go, you know, I got a shout out to the sponsors, starting out with Primary Weapon Systems, PWS. They truly are the evolution of the rifle. Use Byron for 10% off. Gray Man and Company, the most comfortable tactical suits in the game. Use Byron for 10% off with them. Ballistic Theory. You're going to start seeing a lot of stuff with me in Ballistic Theory because they got good ammo for good prices. Use Byron for my discount with those guys as well. Last but not least, Executive Protection Institute. Hey, go check them out and get your executive protection education on. Until the next podcast, this is Byron Rogers, protected by nature and by trade. Out. Boom.